good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are just slightly past quarter two, but I'm aware that there has been um, a sort of a bit of problems with the road. So thank you very much for braving those. Thank you very much for finding your way here. I was chatting to one of my uh, members of my lower six politics set and we were talking about this evening because they were doing some guiding and they sort of said, you can pretty much say whatever you want, sir. Look at what Theresa May did yesterday. So I just kind of thought, well, you know, as long as basically the headmaster doesn't hand me my P45 or whether it's fake or real, then I, I think I should be all right. Anyway, um, welcome to the King's um, Sick Form. Um, I hope you've already had a chance to sort of walk around the various subject areas and had a chance to sort of speak to our pupils who I think, are, as ever, are our best adverts. Um, and if you've not managed to do so, or you've got sort of further questions you'd like to ask, I know that those um, heads of department and various teachers will be around afterwards, so please do um, ask them questions. Um, I suppose I want to sort of start with what I consider to be sort of the, the fundamental question um, of this evening, which is why choose kings? And I suppose in many respects, this is my ideological basis, in other words, the background of what I think are the key things. Um, uh, the first point is sort of, I suppose, sort of a little bit mercenary, but in, in other words, I want you to achieve the best results you possibly can. And actually, you know, that, that is ultimately what you're going to get out of your time at sick form. And so I suppose I start with that, but I don't think that is actually the most important point. Um, we also want to develop the, um, the skills and the op give you the opportunity to achieve a place where you can actually really develop and then go on to a first choice university, a first class apprenticeship, um, go and take a gap year before going and doing, um, um, going on to university or going to university abroad or, what, or whatever it might be. Um, and the results obviously help you get you there. I think that the, the final two points are, for me anyway, um, and maybe I'm being idealistic here, but I think there's no harm in that for, um, straight away, is that I want you to develop intellectual curiosity. I'm sure that you're all curious already. I'm sure that you like certain subjects and you really adore other subjects. You might dislike other subjects and can't wait to get rid of them at the end of the GCSEs. But I really want you, and one of the lovely things about A-levels is that you can throw yourself into those subjects that you've made a choice about, really go above and beyond the syllabus, read around the subject, get a real sense of what it is all about and where it is that it's going to lead you in terms of your own interests in the future. As a result, you will gain satisfaction from your study, and therefore, the two things, I think, at the top, take care of themselves if you're really throwing them yourself into your subject. So that's sort of, in a way, my, my raison d'etre for, for what it is to be a, a sick former at King's. I'd like to sort of slightly take, um, change, shift a little bit, and I'd sort of, I suppose, pose questions to the, the, the pupils who are in here, who are sort of thinking about coming here for the sick form, and that is, you know, what do you want from the sick form. And this is going to be broadly the focus and the structure of what I want to talk to you about for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. And it's sort of fairly clear. And I suppose the first thing that I want to deal with is this idea of success. We have a very clear and proven record here at King's and in the sick form in success. Over the last three years, we've achieved 87% A star to B at A level with high levels of A star and A's and A stars. Um, we were equal top in Chester in 2017, and as we'll talk about in a second, um, our girls did extraordinarily well. Um, we are the top co-educational co um, school in, in the Northwest, and in terms of getting pupils into university, um, a couple of years ago we were voted um, the sixth best in the country, and we were in the top 20 last year as well. So all of this is sort of very, very encouraging in terms of our proven record at doing very well at A-level. And that was particularly important, particularly last year, considering the fact that the A-level results, um, the A-level sort of structure had changed from a modular system to the first batch of sort of almost fully linear subjects. Um, girls do particularly well at King's. Um, there we've got 88 girls in the sick form, although you'd think at times, judging from the noise, that we've got about 60% of girls at, at, at King's. Um, they seem to sort of, the, the boys sort of hide away in classrooms and, you know, and girls and boys make raucous noises and girls seem to be the slightly louder of the two. Um, you know, as part of our head of school team this year, we've got, um, we've got two girls, the head of school in the last couple of years has, has been a girl. And, and, and last year, in terms of their A-level results, they, they did extraordinarily well with 90% A-star to B. Um, so that's really, really encouraging. And we get a lot of girls that are new to the school into the sick form. And you know, anyone that's new to the sick form brings a real vibrancy and a real energy to the place and sort of integrates in and fairly quickly. And, 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 that's, and, and that's really encouraging to see. Um, 
university, I mean, I, I obviously like to talk about university and I like to talk about that. In, in some respects, it's quite a long way away for you, but you know, it's always sort of slightly there in the, in, in the back of your mind. I do like to see the A-level experience as being a singularly enjoyable and challenging and wonderful A-level um, experience. But I'm also aware that actually it does lead to a life beyond sort of the confines of uniforms and structures and bells and all that kind of stuff. And we have a high degree of university um, success. We have sort of 60% who've gone to the Times top 20 universities, 72% to the sort of the prestigious Russell Group universities. Um, we've got an excellent um, uh, level of Oxbridge success over, over the last sort of seven, eight, nine, ten years. Um, you know, 2015 was particularly impressive and very good. We've got a, a very clear structure in place to support those guys who are early applicants. In other words, those pupils who are applying to Oxford and Cambridge or applying to medical, veterinary and dentistry, um, um, and dentistry um, it, it, um, at university. Um, we do very well in terms of the offers per student and, 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 and universities like our students. They like what they, what they do, the, ex, the extra stuff that they've thrown themselves into. Um, university is, is absolutely not, enough, not what we are absolutely all about. We've got two guys who've gone to do apprenticeships, for example, from the, from the upper sixth who've just left, who are, who, who've, who've gone down that particular route. We've got people who've applied to universities abroad. So one guy starting at Princeton this year, the year before someone started at Maastricht and has gone down that sort of European route. So there is a wide variety, an increasing number, and I'll be fairly blunt, this is largely because of me pushing it quite a bit more than maybe once has been, go on and take um, years out and then go to a university the following year or go and do an apprenticeship the following year. And that's certainly something that I'm increasingly trying to in in encourage because frankly, going to university it it is an expensive and it's a life-changing experience and you want to make sure that you get it right rather than throw yourself into it and then possibly regret it. So that's certainly, certainly something that, that, that we encourage. Um, the second one of my major points was the idea of you know, making sure that you guys in here fulfill your potential. Um, we set very clear and high expectations in the sixth form. Um, we have high demands in terms of your GCSE results and we, we hold you to account. We are unashamed about the fact that actually we've got a lot of GCSE data about you. We've got baseline data that you come in with and so actually, if you are expected to get three A's and you are not getting three A's, you know, we're not gonna come down on you like a ton of bricks, but we're gonna say, this is interesting, well, what, what, what's going on here? So we have a culture where we want you to be ambitious. We want you to push yourselves in healthy sort of competition, primarily with yourself. You know, we, we want you to set the high expectations of yourself. This is not from draconian world though, there is support whenever it is needed. You know, there are clinics at lunchtime, there's support, there's after, after school, you can go and talk to teachers. You, can, you, you know, there is a pastoral system that is designed entirely, set up to support the academic life of your, uh, of, 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 of your school life. So the two work very much alongside that sort of academic side and pastoral side. We have a very clear environment of celebrating success. We like it when people do well. For example, someone got, got for the last week or so, the upper sixth have been applying for university, and we make sure that the whole year group knows, and indeed the whole sixth form knows, when someone's you know, got that first offer that, that, that they've applied for, and the second person's got that offer, and someone's maybe got an unconditional offer, as someone did today. We, we like that. It's exciting. So we like to celebrate that kind of stuff because it, it, it brings the school, and it brings the year groups, and it brings the sixth form together. We have um, small class sizes, and this is sort of quite an interesting point, actually. Our maximum is 15. They're usually slightly less than that, but the maximum we have is 15. And we think that's really important. You, know, you want to engage in discussion with teachers who are experts in their field and leading in their field in terms of teaching and really focused on that subject and passionate about that subject. But we don't want you to be in classes of 30, 32. But then the flip side is that we don't want you to also be in classes of one or two, because then the whole process of being in the sixth form is about engagement and discussion and debate and having your views challenged. So actually, there is a really healthy balance to be maintained, and I think we get that right at King's, and that's one of the great strengths, I think, 
of the sick form. And of course, as an additional point, that relationship with your teacher changes as well. It's sort of maybe a little bit more informal. It's a little bit more sort of chatty. And, you know, you can actually really get to know a sort of teacher during those two sick form years. And that's one of the things that I really enjoy personally about sick form teaching. We provide, of course, a large academic choice. You've got your sort of booklets there, and you can see what it is. And I know that a lot of you have spoken to the various teachers this, um, this evening. We offer 25 A-level course subjects, which, of course, makes life, in terms of choosing A-levels, <coughs> a little bit difficult for you there. Sorry, Theresa May moment. Um, um, you start with four A-levels. Um, we are very, um, uh, we are very, very sort of, wedded to this idea of starting with four A-levels, and I am particularly, um, I think it's particularly important. I think it gives a lot of flexibility. Starting with three, I think, I think one of the great things about the legacy of the AS system, which of course is kind of broadly now disappearing and probably going to go within the next five years, I would guess, is that what you have is Four subjects, you might do maths, science, biology, sorry, maths, chemistry, biology, but then you really loved your history, carry it on. <coughs> now, you may well, at the end of the lower sixth, beginning of the upper sixth, then go down to three. But the point is, is that there is no guarantees that if you start on three, you are going to like those three. <coughs> There's no guarantees that you're going to do wonderfully well in maths when previously you have done. So I think it's really important to have that flexibility with four subjects. And the important thing is that, you know, in the area, we're the only school that constructs a timetable built around your choices. We'll come to making those choices a little bit later. But that is fundamentally important. <coughs> Finally, we have, in terms of the academic choice, we have the extended project qualification. The extended project is a research project designed to sort of get you set up and prepared for the kind of university research that you might do further down the line. It's individual, it's personal, it's got to be self-motivated, and we introduce it at the end of the lower sixth, and it carries on over the summer holiday between the lower sixth and the upper sixth, and then throughout the Michaelmas term, and then we have a presentation evening in the January of the upper sixth. We usually have around about a third of our students who would... Um, sort of go for it. And they get a huge amount out of it. And for, for me, one of the highlights of the year is the presentation evening in, in sort of January, February time where people sort of say, this is what I've devoted a huge amount of my time to. This is what I, I've built a drone as we had someone last year. I've written and directed a play. I've composed a soundtrack, whatever it might be. This is, you know, it's really, really exciting that people get themselves thrown into it. Furthermore, Furthermore, it can help you in terms of sort of university applications, in terms of selling yourself to a university, and some instances lowering grade offers and things like that. So it, it's, it's, sort of, it, it's not central to our academic offering, but it is certainly highly encouraged and supportive, and we get about a third of the upper sixth going through and completing it, and they tend to do very, very well indeed. I don't want to talk a little bit, I don't want to talk too much about this because I, 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 as a historian, I tend to get sort of wound, terribly excited about what's happened in the past rather than sort of what's going on in the future. But um, as you may or may not be aware, um, particularly if you've got elder siblings or you know, friends who've got elder children, um, A-level courses have seen quite a lot of radical change during the, the last three or so years. Um, in some respects, you're very, very lucky because from 2018-19, King students will continue with four A-levels, which will be um, three of which, but in many respects four, so we, usually about 20% of our year group will carry on with four into the upper sixth. They will be examined at the end of their two-year course, so we no longer have this situation of doing 50% of your A-levels at the end of the lower sixth. Um, so you know, that has been a big radical shift, and, and for this year's um, lower sixth, it's been a bit of a mixed economy with some people doing the old subjects, some people doing the new subjects, which has caused all kinds of confusion. So thank you to Michael Gove for that. Um, that has now ended, and so you guys are going to have a very clear um, sort of picture. We are starting with these subjects, and I will be examined in two years' time with them. We find out what your predicted grades are and how you are going to ultimately, we think, do at the end of the lower sixth when we have a, some, a robust set of lower sixth examinations right at the end of the lower sixth form. But obviously throughout the lower sixth we have a sense of how you're doing through regular testing and feedback from teachers and things like that. 
We have a lot of university guidance, so this starts in around about November in a formal sense for the lower sixth, but we have a higher education evening, but there is a lot of things built into it. I don't want to talk too much detail about that, but we have university extension classes which happen formally as part of timetables. We have a very clear program for the early applicants for Oxbridge for medical dentistry, veterinary science, because their application is, that there are that many more hoops to jump through. Um, we've got a lot of in-house guidance booklets for parents and for pupils. And there is a very, very clear structure designed throughout the two years that you are in sick form. And indeed, it goes beyond. So if you take a gap year, I've had a conversation just before this started with a former pupil who's currently on a gap year, applying for a second time, sending me a personal statement you have to write for university entrance and things like that. So the support does go beyond your time here. Um, the, the, the most sort of highly valued thing we have are the, are the people surrounding a very highly experienced um, uh, deputy head of sick form, a very experienced tutor team, lots of teachers within the school who know how the system works, uh, and me as well. So th th there's a lot of experience there in terms of actually understanding how the process of university application works, how the system of apprenticeship works, how the system of going abroad works as well. Um, Pastoral care, as I alluded to earlier, is, is central, to what we, central to what we do here. All students are members of one of the new eight houses. This is new to the school um, this year, and so we are almost half a term in. So by the time that hopefully you guys come here, um, we will be a sort of full year in. It will be embedded and very clearly part of the school's identity. And the pastoral care runs very clearly from the head of houses who manage those pastoral care and have a sort of a vertical um, idea of the pupils under their care. The most important person is without a shadow of a doubt the tutor, who you see twice daily, firstly at registration and secondly for a tutor period. You also have a situation whereby the deputy head of sick form and myself also have an overarching control over the sick form. So we sort of tend to work alongside the heads of houses with the tutors to ensure that you are doing as best as you possibly can and that you are enjoying your time here and you're throwing yourself into the myriad opportunities. The most important thing, hence the reason I've made it important in capital letters and underlined it, is the fact that actually there is always someone to listen to. So if it's not your tutor, if it's not me, if it's not Mrs. Hollingworth, the deputy head of sick form, there is always going to be someone to listen to from wherever within the school. The further opportunities for develop, again, I alluded to this earlier, is this idea of an enrichment program. So every two weeks, every two weeks, there are two periods given over on a Friday, periods four and five, to um, our enrichment program. And this is basically just an opportunity to go and learn beyond the actual school curriculum. So it's a chance to step aside from the curriculum, from your A-level subjects, and actually just do something different. I mean, the thing that I really love is this idea of community action, which I think is really important, actually. Um, I think it's fundamental for people to get out there, see what, the, see what people are like who are less fortunate than us, um, have, have a real sense of developing community. And there's things like university extension, sort of things like critical thinking with me and various other sort of qualifications and awards that you can throw yourself into. You can do a psychology AS level, for example, in, um, in the two years of, of, of the sixth form. So there's lots of, lots of opportunities for the sixth form there. Further opportunities come with the myriad events in terms of sport. We have a games afternoon with over 20 activities. Um, if you want to arrange to go to the gym or you want to arrange to go and do a sport that we don't offer, you can gain approved, um, approved absence in the sick form, which is kind of one of the perks of being in the sick form. You, you may know about our rowing reputation. Um, obviously, we've got a boathouse down on the river and loads of the pupils get um, very, very slightly frighteningly focused on rowing. Um, I, I'm still, after sort of three and a bit years here, to sort of still get my head around rowing, but... All the guys that do it seem to love it and are willing to hurt themselves a lot for it. But it's sort of, it, it's a really interesting and wonderful part of the school. 24 music groups, um, five productions a year. We've currently got huge cast involved in uh, production um, next, early next year of, of Nicholas Nickleby. One of the th things that I want to point out is the fact that every year that I've been here, six formers have directed their own productions whether it's part of an extended project, whether it's something they just like doing, whether it's something in addition to their drama course, which a lot of people, an um, increasing number of people are, are taking. I find it really, really exciting that we've got guys who then go and often do drama or go and do something related to directing, go and do. If you can't find something you want to do, start a group, do it yourself. 
Engineering Society was set up last year by a couple of sick formers. Our Medical Society is student-led. Um, which is brilliant because it means that I don't have to organize it. So it's kind of run usually by some very motivated upper sick form medical applicants and they get people in, they give talks, they give practice interviews, all that, they keep people abreast of all. And it's student run. It was set up about eight, nine years ago and it has been a self perpetuating thing ever since. That's really, that's really exciting. We also have a very clear prefect structure as the pupils go further up the school, we want them to get involved in senior roles within their houses and in the various life of the school, whether it's charity, whether it's as part of the head of school team, um, whether it's sort of engaging with the school council through the student voice, um, whether it's taking leader, leading roles in sports teams and clubs and things like that. So it, it, there are huge numbers of opportunity and the further you go up the school, we want people to be embracing those opportunities. And a lot of our sick formers do do that, as I hope you've seen this evening with our upper sixth guides and talking about things and showing that they're engaged you know, and they genuinely are. So I will pause. Um, is King's the right school for you? Um, if you think it is, um, obviously we've got, an, uh, we've got an open day very quickly following on the back of this or an open afternoon. If you want to come round, I will be in the sixth form, so please do come and have a conversation with me. Um, it tends to be slightly quieter than tonight, so that, you know, that it's a good opportunity to come and sit and have a big long conversation with me if you, if you fancy doing so. Obviously, some of you will know exactly what four subjects that you want, and you're not going to move from that. Others will be very, very unsure. And I've spoken to a few people tonight who were like, oh, I've got about seven or eight subjects, and I'm not really sure. You're in a great position. That's perfect. Yeah, very, very lucky. I couldn't wait to get rid of all of the sciences, the language, the maths. Thank you very much. Give me writing essays all day long. Um, so my decisions are very, very easy. I suspect that some of yours will not be so. So choose four subjects, but up to six options. On the back of that, um, the deputy head academic will form the various option blocks and things like that. Complete the application form, which is at the back of the booklets. It's worth pointing out these um, entry requirements. Obviously, GCSEs are in a stage of transition, as you probably all know. Um, in old money, you've got to get four grade A's and three grade B's. In new money, it's sevens and uh, sixes. Um, so this is going to be an interesting one for um, the sort of the future. <coughs> A minimum grade B in those A-level subjects, obviously with things like maybe business or economics that you might not have done, or politics, um, then you, you know, we would look at your English results, for example, and economics would also look at your maths results and things like that, because those are quite important. We expect a minimum of CCD from your best three subjects in your internal exams. The other thing that I think is really worth stressing is there are bursaries offer. Okay, there is financial support and scholarships are available um, in a sort of competitive interview which would happen sometime um, um, sort of in early December. So lots and lots of things going on. Um, please do, if you have any more questions, go and ask people. The final thing I would like to do is introduce you to two people. Now, I, I always think it's more it's quite helpful rather than hearing my sort of semi-polished talk, um, uh, despite the coughing. Um, it's much more helpful just to actually hear from guys who were in your position a couple of years ago. Um, Addy, uh, who is currently in the upper sixth and he's deputy head of school, um, so go to show, you know, he was new to the school and now he's deputy head of school, uh, came from an international school in China. Kim, um, who is um, a pocket barrel of energy and happiness and smilingness, if you've ever met her, um, she's absolutely wonderful. She came from a, a school just down the road, and I thought it'd be really helpful just to hear from those guys for about a sort of minute or so each. So, Adi, I'm going to hand over to you now, if that's all right. Um, good evening, parents and students. My name is Adi, and I joined King's last year in the lower sixth. Prior to this, I lived in Shanghai, China, and it was my dad's decision to change workplaces that had us move from China to the UK. And unfortunately, due to this last minute decision making, and like all of you here, I was unable to attend any open evenings. But I'm glad to let you know that somehow I've still made the right decision coming here, <laughs> nonetheless. I study a, ver a variety of subjects, maths, further maths, physics and economics, and was put into a form of students with similar subject choices. This was a massive convenience as they helped me navigate through the school and it gave me a chance to get to know the people I share lessons with very well. Aside from that, joining one of the many clubs and societies run during lunch helped me meet a lot of new people 
Um, I enjoyed finessing my opponent in bridge club and presenting lectures in economic society. And that way, in just a couple of weeks, I was settled into my new surroundings. One of the few things I did have a look at before deciding which school to go to was academic performance. Getting to grips with the new A-level curriculum was made a lot easier by teachers who really cared about their subjects and students who fostered healthy competition every lesson. And the amount of support I've received during breaks, lunches, and off timetable before school starts have been incredibly useful. Another aspect of being a sixth former, which I cherish a lot, is the prefix system, as Mr. Carter mentioned. At the end of lower sixth, I was able to be the deputy head of school for this academic year. And despite being a new student, I was welcomed and given the opportunity to take up this role, gaining support from all my friends. The school also has a lot of general and subject prefects, a lot of whom you have surely met today. And it gives us all a chance to be truly involved in the school life and make a contribution. Lastly, I've changed many schools in my life, but transition to King's has been one of the easiest, as I'm sure would be the case for you too. So please feel free to come and find me if you have any questions. We also have a sixth form student room on Facebook if you have any questions later on. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Abby. And this is Kim as well, who was also new, new to the school um, and slightly unimaginatively takes quite similar subjects to Addy, which I sort of only realised. I didn't plan that particularly well. Kim, over to you. Um, hi, my name's Kim, and I came from a school in Wrexham called Cluedog. Um, the school didn't have a sixth form, so it was mandatory for me to change. When I first applied to King, I, King's, I chose to take maths, politics, economics, and biology. And due to my undecisive nature, I changed my options quite a lot and ended up taking maths, further maths, biology and economics, and I now take maths, further maths and economics. Um, starting a new school for six was very daunting. Um, I thought most of the um, students would already have friends from lower down the school. However, um, it was so welcoming in this school that I didn't even feel as if I was new after a few weeks here. Um, I was also very worried about only studying GCSE, whereas I knew um, in Kings they studied IGCSE. And I did find um, the change from GCSE to A-level um, quite difficult. However, there was so much support in Kings. Um, I was able to go to support sessions every lunchtime. I'd go to biology support on a Monday and math support on a Thursday. And then I'd be able to ask teachers for help at tutor period or breaks or before school. And I also found um, another way that I felt um, warmed me to school was all the um, clubs and societies that are available. I was able to join netball on Wednesday afternoons in games, and I was able to make friends from other years as well as my own year. And I was able to be in the school play, even though I didn't take drama or music at A-level. They welcomed everyone from removes up to up, upper six. Um, and so now I hope to study economics at uni. Uh, we, we have a new credit system here for when people do things very well. Those two are going to be getting a lot of them later. So thank you very much, you two. Um, as I said, if you've got any questions, then there's loads of people to ask. I'm, I'm also around on, on the open afternoon if, if you're available to come to that. Um, please, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the evening. If you're heading home, please drive safely. And um, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.